I'm Ashlyn and my husband is Zach and we're traveling A to Z. Join us this month as we go explore Ireland. Our first stop is to the Guinness Brewery in Dublin, Ireland. So we're heading from London and going to Dublin. We got stuck in London, so hopefully we get on the plane. We made it to Dublin. Because our flight got canceled and we had to spend the night in London, we missed our whole day in Dublin. The only thing we had time for was the Guinness storehouse, which we got tickets ahead of time for. Join us as we take you through a tour of this seven floor building and talk about the history and how Guinness beer is made. When you get there, you stand in line for your ticket time. They let the whole group in at a time. Inside, it's a self-guided tour, but there are sections that there are people talking, and there's a lot of animation that tells you about what's going on. The first section of the tour is how beer is made. Water, barley, hops, and yeast. That is how you start to make Guinness. And this is the barley. So two thirds of the barley that grow in Ireland gets turned into Guinness. And they grow over 100,000 tons. That's a lot. They use a combination of roasted barley, malted and unmalted barley to make Guinness. That's a hot plant. It can go up to 15 feet. Arthur Guinness discovered this perfect piece for the Guinness. Yeast turns the natural sugars into alcohol. Apparently, it's the hops that flavor the beer. Eight million liters flow into the Guinness factory a day of water. That's a lot of water. The next floor is the brewing process. They're brewing and roasting. The barley is roasted at 232 degrees Celsius, which gives Guinness its unique flavor, aroma, and color. The Guinness Factory is one of the only breweries in the world to roast their own barley on site, working 365 days per year. They roast 21,000 tons of barley each year, and each batch of barley takes two and a half hours to roast to perfection. The brewing grains are fed into mills. The grains are then crushed, releasing the inner starches and flours, but leaving the outer barley husk as intact as possible. Once the grain has been milled, it is called grist. The grist is then mixed with hot water, creating a porridge-like substance called mash. The mash is then stirred. The process uses the natural enzymes of the malt to convert starch into fermentable natural sugars. This is now called worst. The bitter hops are then added to the worst and the mixture is boiled. The hops gives Guinness its bitterness and taste. We're now heading to the fermentation area, which is how the yeast transforms the bittersweet worst into the most iconic beer. You first add the famous Guinness yeast. The yeast then converts natural sugars to alcohol. The yeast multiplies and also creates CO2. The yeast imparts unique flavors and aromas on the beer. 1959, Guinness was the first one to introduce nitrogen into their beers. There are 30 million bubbles in every single pint of beer. The next stop is Guinness Quality. This is a neat video about the quality of Guinness. Guinness brews from around the world are sent to St. James Gate for quality assurance and tasting. Every brew is taste tested 23 times and then analyzed 250 more times by scientists. They have taste testing at 10 a.m. every day for quality and assurance. Make sure that the beer tastes the best. This area shows how they build the barrels out of hot, wet oak and how they banded them to keep the barrels together. We're now heading upstairs to the next level. The next stop is to teach you how to drink Guinness. We walked into this very bright white room with no windows and is a lot cooler temperature than outside of this room. This room is supposed to heighten your senses so you can really enjoy the beer. 
The containers with the smoke are different smells that are related to the beer making process. The official name of the color of Guinness is ruby red. It's when you hold the glass of Guinness up in a bright space like this, you might see that ruby red color kind of shine at the bottom of the glass. He's now going to teach us how to properly drink Guinness. The first thing you're going to do is just breathe in through your nose and hold the air in your lungs. The reason why we do this is because our sense of taste is very closely connected to our sense of smell. So when you breathe in through your nose, engaging your sense of smell, you're cleansing your palate and making your taste buds more sensitive for the beverage that you're about to drink. The second step is to take a generous mouthful of beer and let it flow across your tongue so you can enjoy all the different flavors within it. And the third step is to breathe back out through your nose at the end to enjoy the aftertaste. Okay. Okay. If you get a hint of sweetness, that will be more on the tip of your tongue, whereas the bitter flavors are sensed more in the back and the sides. This is a fun area of the building that has some of Guinness's old advertising. Here's the famous Guinness harp dated 1702. This campaign was a fish on a bicycle. It was produced in 1996 as part of Not Everything is Black and White Makes Sense. The Guinness Brewery is currently 150 years into a 9,000 year lease. We're now making our way to the fifth floor, which has food and drinks. If you keep going, you could see how to get to the gravity bar. We're now heading to the seventh floor, which is the rooftop bar called the gravity bar. This bar has some of the best views in all of Dublin. When you walk in, there's two different sections, one to the right and one to the left. You can walk around the whole rooftop bar and you get a 360 degree view of the whole city. And on the windows, you can see explanations of what you are looking at. When you go on the Guinness tour, they give you a free pint of Guinness that you could get at the Gravity Bar. This is a great way to end the tour. I hope you enjoyed the Guinness tour in Dublin. Join us next week for more adventures around Ireland. Please subscribe below to follow more of our adventures. Thanks for watching.